boy, Tim Allen of Home Improvements Tool Time would be proud of the landscape industry. There's all kinds of new tools coming out with lots of power. Just like this new hand pruner that's come out that's pretty lightweight, and it's by Woodzig of the Oregon Cutter Systems. And the neat thing about it, the chain kind of reminds me of paper clips. It's self-tensioning, of course, it's a little bit coarser. And you really never have to sharpen them. It's just a replaceable chain. Now you can cut from the bottom by connecting the branch right in this angle or from the top down by hitting it at this lip. And the size that you would cut would be anywhere from a half inch to 10 and a half inch branches. Now this particular one is an extending pole, telescoping pole. It also comes in a hand model. But let me show you a safety feature here. You have to push this button in before you can ever push the control. And of course, this particular one is uh, electric with an extension cord. They also come in battery operated. But you can see that chain there, how that works. So it really will make a pretty good cut on printing trees. So really a nice addition without all that uh, extra work of having the hand side. Now another change that's taking place is with the lawn spreaders. I think you're, most of us are familiar with the traditional ones. This is the drop spreader. And remember, it drops in a pattern right here. So to get overlapping, to make sure your fertilizer is going to touch, you have to almost overlap that width of the wheel. So a lot of times we just tell people to use half the rate and then go half one way and then the other half, say north and south and east and west. That way you're going to cover territory and hopefully get all the spaces in between. Of course, the this one really allows for a little bit more air, but it's a rotary one or a whirly type that throws it. And if you've ever calibrated on a concrete or anything, you'll notice that it does throw it heavily on one side. But again, you can split up the right both directions and kind of uh, help out in any room for air again. Now, a lot of people with smaller lawns will use the handheld spreader types, again, that you just crank. Of course, you have to fill them up pretty much. But where the new power is coming in is with another handheld one. And this is called the Power Gardener by Natural Earth Technologies. And you can see this particular one is battery charged right here in the front of it. So you can recharge it each time. It's very lightweight. It's a little bit noisier than our tree trimmer. But in the hopper, it will also come off for easy cleaning. It just snaps in there. And then you can. Uh, twist it back. Also you'll notice that there's different levels for like dust, grass seed, granulars. You can use uh, insecticides, herbicides, various granular products or uh, fertilizer obviously. So a lot of uses for this. Now we're going to use it to put on our fertilizer but the first thing and you've heard me talk about this often is you need to do a soil test to know what you need to put down so you can save some money again. Our soil test shows us that we have plenty of phosphorus and potassium, that we only need to add nitrogen. Now, actual nitrogen, which would be 100%, is not ever really sold when you go to the garden centers, but you use a rate of one pound of actual nitrogen to figure out how much you use. So you always just remember one pound of actual nitrogen is what you use to figure it up, and I'll show you how to do that. We are going to put on urea, which is either 45 or 46, zero, zero. Again, no phosphorus, potassium. So that means we have 45 or 46 percent nitrogen, not 100 percent, but we're figuring out based on 100 percent. So if we've got to figure that up, uh, there's room in there because of, of clay particles, other things, to actually hold the nitrogen in there to make it a pelletized or granular formulation. So the way you figure out how much to use, you take the one pound of actual nitrogen and you divide it by .45 or 46 or what other type of nitrogen you're going to use. We're using urea again. So we're dividing one by .45 and we get 2.2 and we just round it off to two pounds. So we'll be putting on two pounds of 4500 per thousand square feet. Now an example would be if you're putting on enough fertilizer for a 4,000 square foot lawn, then you would multiply the two by the 4,000 or two times four and you know that you need eight pounds of 4,500 for your particular lawn if it's 4,000 square feet. Now here at the Studio Gardens, our Bermuda grass is about 12,000 square feet, so we would multiply two by 12, 
we'd need about 24 or a 25 pound bag of fertilizer. Now I don't think people realize that it's not a lot of fertilizer in a pound. I've already calculated my Pyrex glass here so it was at zero and now I've put in my 4500 and that is a pound of fertilizer right there. That's all we're going to um, uh, use in that particular glass. Now remember with our formula that we just showed you, we're going to put on two pounds of fertilizer in a thousand square foot area. So there's another pound. We'll put that in our hopper. Now the instructions on this particular handheld one says that you would use one hopper and a half to put on about two pounds of fertilizer. Well you can see we've already put two pounds in there and we're not even full to the mark that they tell us to fill the hopper up. That's all the fertilizer that we need to put in this 1,000 square foot area. We've marked off an area that's 1,000 square feet, and you can see that's not really a big area for that amount of fertilizer that I have in here. So to calibrate that, we know this amount has to go within here. Uh, if you're using the hand or the drop or whatever, you need to determine how fast you're going to walk, how fast you're going to crank, and hopefully this will discharge it at the same pace. So we're going to experiment here a little bit, try to get an idea so we'll know how to pace ourselves for the rest of it. But this is the two pounds of 4500 that we need to put on this thousand square foot area. Well now just as important as the amount of fertilizer and the type of fertilizer that you're putting on, it's also very important to know when to put the fertilizer on. I think as a general rule, most Oklahomans have a tendency to want to put that fertilizer out a little bit too early. And you really need to go out, especially on a Bermuda grass lawn, and just take a look at it and see when it's starting to green up. We're just now starting to get some of the uh, stolons and the rhizomes to start growing and sending out some green leaves here. So really we're a little bit early even and this is around the middle of April. So wait till the lawn actually starts greening up before you put on that application, that first application. And as a general rule for Bermuda grass lawns we suggest that you put on an application in April and that may be the middle to the end of April or even early April depending on which part of the state you're in. Then another application in June, and a lot of times in June it can be a little bit dry or start getting dry. So what you want to do is if it's dry, be sure and water it in. And then the third and last application on Bermuda grass would be in August. Now a lot of people have a tendency to want to fertilize after August, and that's what's actually stimulating some of the problems for the Bermuda grass to be too tender going into winter and we get a little bit more spring dead spot problems, which is a bad fungus problem that has a relationship to the amount of care that you're giving on the lawn. So our turf specialists tell us not to fertilize after the month of August. And again, you'll probably have to uh, water that fertilizer in. So three times only for Bermuda grass. And with fescue, our cool season grasses, the recommendations are usually March and May, again, September and November, four applications. But we only put on two here, and we feel like we get plenty of nice green color and those times of the year that we put ours on are March and September. Now, if I can uh, get on my soapbox here, another thing that a lot of gardeners are faced with this time of year are the thought of putting on weed and feed products, which is a, usually a pre-emergence herbicide mixed with the fertilizer. Now, let's think about that process after we've just talked about this. Uh, pre-emergence, sure enough, usually needs to go on in March, late February, depending on which part of the state you're in and depending on the soil temperature. But is the Bermuda grass growing in that time? Well, it's really not. So what you end up doing is putting on a pre-emergence that doesn't control generally the weeds that are growing at that time, like henbit and dandelion. It's going to prevent crabgrass and things from later on, and you're putting on a fertilizer when the grass is still dormant and it's not taking it up. So you end up fertilizing the henbit and dandelion and chickweed. So really, 
it's a it's a number one selling product because of the fact that it think we think it's a little bit easier we're putting on one application instead of two but it really doesn't apply that great to Oklahoma conditions so it works sometimes better for fescue and some of those kinds of things but I would encourage you to go ahead and put the pre-emergence on early on by itself and then wait and fertilize so of course it's two applications the garden centers are selling two products versus one but it's really a hard thing to convince people but really just common sense in the time of year that it's growing will tell you that it doesn't work that great so it's one way to save money and the reason that I really want to spend this much time on fertilizing I really think a lot of people put on too many applications some people put on fertilizer on Bermuda lawns every four to six weeks and most of us from what you could see put on too much at the same time so we're wasting money it washes off in the street it leaches out very quickly and that's why slow release or fewer applications is actually better so I'd encourage you to really think about your maintenance program this year for your lawns whether it's Bermuda, fescue, zoysia or whatever and we really wish you the best because boy summer's right around the corner with lots of chores to be doing on the lawns